Listeners, beware, you're in for a scare. Hey guys, welcome back to Nightmare in Fear Street, and I'm your host, Zach. Guys, this is weird because we're not reviewing something that's Goosebumps, Fear Street, or anything in the middle just because we're going to be talking about Indiana Jones, you know, that movie with Harrison Ford. Why are we talking about this when we're not talking about, you know, horror? Well, R.L. Stein used to write Choose Your Own Adventure stories for Indiana Jones, and I I can safely say that I am in good hands with this because I'm not going to be making the choices. No, I'm going to have like an Indiana Jones expert. (laughs) Hello, my name is Gabriel Montoya from the Theme Park Duo podcast, and I am a massive Indiana Jones fan. Not only that, but he's also really likes horror, so this is even better. You should really see my office right now that I'm recording in. I mean, like, there's Exorcist, Nightmare on Elm Street, Night of Living Dead, you know, like a whole bunch of stuff in here. I mean, I am definitely a horror type of guy. I mean, I go to Scary Farm all the time, for goodness sake. All the scary stuff. Yes, spooky, scary skeleton. Spooky, oh my god. Yeah, spooky's that's that's the right word. So we have Gabe from the Theme Park Duo, and it's really cool to have you on, because, you know, I've listened to a lot of your content, and it's always a lot of fun talking about theme park stuff because much like you i'm very fanatical when it comes to theme parks (laughs) well thank you so much for having me on you know i'm really excited to actually talk about something i don't know if people know me from my last show i was on the park fanatics and and now i started the new show called theme park duo with my wife so now we have a blog and everything so i'm glad that you really enjoyed this stuff you know put our whole heart and soul into this you know we actually try yeah it's so adorable like a couple doing like theme park stuff because where i work you see a lot of couples and then there's oh my god it's like a hallmark card it's amazing i proposed to my wife at disneyland did you i did i proposed in front of the castle the original plan was actually to propose over at snow white's grotto you know to the right of the castle oh yeah with all those seven dwarf statues yeah yeah you know it's a little off the beaten path so i was thinking to myself okay this is perfect great opportunity there's not going to be a ton of people it'll be really intimate it'll be really romantic and it'll be perfect but my friends were scouting the location before we went they're like it's way too dark nothing's going to turn out so it switched to the front of the castle like the last moment and i was acting weird so she was very much aware of what was happening she was just pretty much waiting for it you know i'm happy with it the way it turned out the pictures were great so we're talking about indiana jones yeah and not, the not proposals <laughs> i mean there is indiana technically we could talk about disneyland because there is a indiana jones ride at disneyland oh uh, can we talk so- about that instead <laughs> we could end up in like the chamber of destiny you know i'm not complaining <laughs> yeah, exactly, right? Just don't look into the eyes of the idol, or we'll be in a lot of trouble. I've always wondered, what if everyone just closed their eyes? I'm like, oh, this this is awkward. <laughs> so, to this week, we're talking about Indiana Jones and the Curse of the Horror Island. Excitement, thrills, danger awaits you on Indiana Jones, trademark. In the jungles of the South Pacific, the choice is up to you. How familiar are you with Indiana Jones? Like, give us, give us the ba- life story. <laughs> I am extremely familiar with Indiana Jones. So the first time that I ever watched Raiders of the... Oh, actually, it was Temple of Doom, and it was on TV. And I remember being at my uncle's house, and it was the part where the guy got his heart ripped out. And I thought, this is something that I don't understand what's going on. I probably shouldn't be watching it, but I can't stop watching it. And from that day on, I watched all the other ones. Last Crusade and Raiders of the Lost Ark. Raiders of the Lost Ark being like one of my favorites. It's kind of a tie with Last Crusade. But, you know, I was the kid. I was obsessed. I bought the hat. I bought the shirt. I bought the toys. You know, I would run around my backyard with the hat and told my mom to do the song so that I could run around and reenact in my head what Indiana Jones would do. So, I mean, I was that kid. That crazy kid. And... You know, now that they even have the Indiana Jones ride over at Disneyland, I freak out every time. Like, I pretty much become, a, like, back to that 10-year-old, like, 8-year-old again, running around in my backyard. I feel like I'm, like, in the adventure. So, I mean, Indiana Jones to me is something that's so close and dear to my heart. And, you know, I feel like he's the quintessential action hero uh, of that time and you know i don't feel like anybody else could beat him he's just he's the man's man he's not infallible you know which i love that about him he's it's kind of like like die hard and like how people like john mcclain because he gets like hit the everything beat out of him same as indy like indy like like in the first movie when he's just getting beat up by the one nazi guy 
Yeah, exactly. He's he's going to get maimed, he's going to get hurt, but he always gets the job done. Which, by the way, I want to point out really quick that I find it really funny that out of any of the movies, the only thing he's come back with was the Cross of Coronado, and Marcus Brody was so happy that he actually came back with something for once. Why, thank you, Andy. Our museum is almost bankrupt, but this should <laughs> save us like three days. Well, think about it. Like, he comes up and he gives it to him, and Marcus is just like, oh my god, you got it, and he goes, we should go to dinner and celebrate <laughs> and he goes you're a treat and marcus is like yes my treat <laughs> like he's not even paying attention he's just oh my god <laughs> well, i mean what would happen okay so just imagine like them going and he gets the ark of the covenant and they decide to reopen it again i'm pretty sure he wouldn't do that <laughs> yeah but would the people in the museum would hmm, what's inside this oh I wonder what's inside this box a whole bunch of standard oh my god so the first time i saw india jones was with my grandparents and as a person is of the jewish descent watching the Nazis getting like their heads blown off and stuff was like for as an eight-year-old kid it blew my mind <laughs> it's kind of satisfying it's it's very satisfying watching people's faces <laughs> melt off and stuff like yeah. yeah I mean it is a very cool scene albeit some a little bit dated at this point but altogether I feel like that scene holds up pretty well oh no I, I'm pretty sure if you showed it to a kid now they, they, they their heads would explode still <laughs> every time you say their heads are explode I'm like <laughs> we're talking about a head exploding scene right now so which one is he talking about is it literally gonna affect the children or are they just gonna be blown away <laughs> I'm I'm confused it's both of them <laughs> oh my god because they're also opening up the ark was it scanners? No, oh, do scanners have some of the best head explosions? <laughs> Though I really like the head explosion they have in this movie called Terra Firmer. Terra Firmer, never heard of it. Uh, it's it's a trauma movie, but the guy blows his head off, and it it they make it look fake, but they like put like super gore to it. Nice, it's, it's amazing. Nice. Gabe, do you want to describe this cover? Yeah, it's kind of interesting. Uh, <laughs> so, you know, of course we have, like, the big Indiana Jones trademark up on top, the uh, subtext to it, so the Curse of the Horror Island. But there's a gigantic floating indie head in the clouds while he's holding a gun up. Kind of looks like he's trying to talk into it like a cell phone. Then below that, to the right, is an island with a whole bunch of villagers who look very, very angry it's almost like the villagers from the original king kong because they have like the steamboat in the background they almost they also look like the ones from jungle cruise a bit too oh you're right yeah they kind of look like the ones that are like throwing the spears at you well quote throwing the spears at you and stuff they look like oh no danger danger ricochet ricochet exactly i love that (laughs) it's so cheesy i love it when they actually like say oh they're welcoming us and it's a dance it's great it's not dangerous at all you know when they play it completely the opposite i I love that and then to the left of the island is (laughs) this is my favorite part of the entire cover so it's indy in like an action pose holding his whip so his whips like twirled behind him he has his arm around a panther who's attacking in one direction but his head's turned in the opposite direction looking at Indy so almost looks like they're trying to take a selfie together in a weird way and then there's like for some reason a paper boy right next to him they're going oh my god I feel like Indy's trying to like put the I I want to say it's like a jaguar but I know it's not it's, it's a panther like, like he's gonna put it in like a headlock <laughs> <laughs> it looks so weird it's tell such me, an odd cover tell me do you feel so you want to hear the back so just to get a little ambient of the curse of the horror island it's your summer vacation will your friends go to camp or travel with their families you embark on an exciting journey with your cousin indiana jones trademark of the great archaeologist to the distant coral sea you are bound to horror island in search of a priceless ebony idol Bone legend has it that the island is cursed, and many go there, never live to return. What will happen? The danger begins before you even leave New York Harbor, and every step of the way, battling hostile natives, savage jungle animals, you decide what you do with your move to find your fate. Uh... The first question is, is, I'm looking at the cover, the kid's kind of young for Indiana Jones to be his cousin. I don't know what that kid has to do with the story. You're the kid. I'm the kid. You're the kid. I'm too old to be that kid. Okay, so I guess Indiana Jones is just your cousin. Woo! That's an awesome cousin. Actually, no, it's not. I don't want to have to get, like, almost killed every weekend. Yeah, because that's just Indiana Jones, you know. He's found the Holy Grail, survived a thermonuclear detonation. Almost got his heart torn out. 
I mean, it's like your mom sends you to your 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 cousin's house. It's like I d- I don't want to go to my cousin's house, mom. Like you don't understand what happens when you send me to my cousin's house. She's like she's like, oh no, that's just stories you tell me. You're playing around. No, we literally almost die every weekend. Yeah, you know, last week he like chopped a bridge in half, and like ninety percent of the people chasing him got eaten by alligators. <laughs> oh, honey, that's such a silly fun idea for a game. Yeah, it's called life. And then like afterwards, when like he's in therapy trying to like figure out why he's such a thrill seeker. Okay, Timmy, why do you keep jumping out of airplanes with that parachute? I don't know. I just want to feel the rush. It's the thrill. Actually, it'd be J- his name's James because he's James Bond. <laughs> J- Jimmy, James just needs to have short round around just to try to keep him in line. This is like, you listen to me more, you live longer. That's my terrible accent. I apologize. I, I think for this one, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to try to do my Harrison Ford impression, but I don't have enough self-loathing, so... Get off my plane! Hey, I don't think he's allowed on a plane anymore ever since he's like three plane crashes and almost hitting a Boeing 747. We've had, I've had this conversation with a few other people and it's like, <laughs> do us all a favor, do your family a favor, don't fly anymore. <laughs> Just please don't. Here's the mood. New York City Harbor, June 1933. Knowing why I like it's June 10th, my birthday. I am like negative like 60 years old. Hey, you, watch out. You jump out of the way as a crate piled high with steamer trunks rumbles past you. A gigantic ocean liner has pulled its po- into port and the passengers are streaming down the gang plate, filling their piers with noise and confusion. This has been the most exciting summer of your life. And it's only June. Uh, what? Okay. It's only June. How much fun could he have had before that? I remember that's when I started getting onto vacation. It was June. <laughs> well, that kid must have had a lot of fun before that, then. Do you want to ye olde Chuck E. Cheese? And... <laughs> ye old Chuck E. Cheese? Yeah. Ye old Chuck of Cheese. You had no idea when school let out with your parents were sending you to spend the summer with your cousin, Indiana Jones. Yeah. You had no idea that as soon as you arrived, Cousin Indy would get a mysterious assignment in assignment that would take both of you to a small jungle island in the South Pacific. Uh, this is better than going to summer camp. You shout out, out over the noise of the crowd appear. Take it easy, kid, Indy says, uh, pushing his battered hat back to his head. Look for Pier 66. Crack? What's that sound? Crack, crack. Gunfire. Someone's sh- shooting at us. This is not, this is par for the course, by the way. Par for the course. This kid needs to get used to it. So he doesn't want us to sit still, Indy says, as you two duck behind a stack of luggage. His eyes narrow as he scans the pier, pinning. A bullet bounces off the suitcase in front of you. More than one of them, Indy says. They're sitting ducks here. We've got to move. Look, there's Pier 66 right ahead, you cry, pointing out. You must be our boat. You see a small red cargo boat bobbing up and down in the dark waters. You try to uh, make a run for the boat. We'll be an easy target, Indy says. Maybe we should run into the crowd and try to lose them in the confusion. Here's your first choice. Do you decide to try to run for the cargo boat with bullets flying past you? Or do you decide to run into the crowd and use them as human meat shields? You know, I I feel like I'm trying to think what Indy would do. What would Indy do? Crazy ways of getting out of situations, but sometimes he's an idiot and he just does something. So, you know what? Yeah, like shooting the person instead of having a sword fight. Yeah, exactly. Like, <laughs> you know, I'm, I'm going to go with my gut here. I feel like Indy's the type of person to do this. He's just going to run straight for the boat. He's just going to get on the boat. Okay, so are you ready for page eight? Yeah. So, so we're dodging bullets. and Keep your head down, kid. You don't run in a straight line. Indy yells, just run fast. So you're telling me you're going to outrun bullets? <laughs> serpentine! 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 <laughs> you both leave the safety of the luggage pile and run towards Pier 66. The cargo boat. Bullets whistle past your head, and there are screams and loud footsteps, people rushing to get over to your way and away from the gunfire. But all you see is a red cargo boat waiting on the other end of the dock. Then you hear an angry voice, Freeze, or I'll shoot! A policeman is standing at the edge of the pier, his pistol drawn. Don't take another step! Say, keep running, kid, Indy yells. Get to the boat, but the policeman can help us, you yell. What should you do? So do you want to either run and run past the policeman, or do you want to stop and ask the policeman for help? I feel like stopping and asking for help would be a really bad decision, especially by being chased. Like, he's like, see, I'm going to put bullets into you. <laughs> you. You don't have any whiskey or any uh, prohibition stuff, do you? Nah, you see here, you see here, you better stop. Um, you know, honestly, uh, I'd probably say run past him. I'm adventurous. This is an Indiana Jones episode, man. Screw the police. Screw the, <laughs> screw the police. <laughs> I can't say the F word in the show, so. NWA reference, people. Keep running, kid, Indy yells. 
run all the way to South America if we have to. <laughs> I feel like then, like, the kid's, like, running on water, like, dash. <laughs> he, like, jumps into the water and just starts, sc- like, swimming as fast as he can, like Aquaman. The policeman raises his pistol. Without slowing his pace, Indy grabs a giant oil barrel from the side of the dock. He gives it a strong push and rolls it right into the policeman. He pushes him over the over it on his back, and the gun flies out of his hand. Indy grabs the policeman's pistol and keeps running. Oh, my God. <laughs> That's awesome! That is so cool! <laughs> you just take a few steps behind in a second you're on the dock in a small cargo boat. We've got to get uh, this crate moving, says Indy. Silence! Suddenly three masked men carrying pistols. Where do you think you're going, one asks. So like, I feel like they're like the shadow, like 1930s, like stock villains. Uh, they got like yeah. bandanas on their yeah. faces. So far, you've been shot at and you've uh, defied the police. And um, Indy's taking, he's packing heat now. Yeah, we're doing pretty well here. Now he's got two guns, because he usually keeps a gun with him. Living on the edge. Hit the deck, Indy screams. You drop to the floor. Indy grabs the fire hose off the cabin wall and turns it on on the three masked men. The force of the spray pushes them back, choking and gasping for air. Drop your guns and scram, yells Indy. The three men don't hesitate. They drop the guns on the deck. Indy keeps a powerful spray on them. They run off the boat onto the deck. Stop where you are, cries the policeman. Does he have, like, his finger guns out at this point? <laughs> He's just like, ah, you stop there. Surrounded by cops. The cops will be on this boat in no time. Indy says, I don't know where the crew is, but we got to get out of here. We don't have much time for explanation. We can't sell this boat ourselves, you cry. You see three policemen on the dock are heading back into the direction. I don't think we have any other choices, Indy. Turn to page 65. There's a lot of turning the pages here to, like, different pages after not even making a decision. Yeah, that happens a lot in Choose Your Own Adventures for a little bit. Driving a tub like this can't be that hard, can it? Indy asks, looking at the controls. Don't we have to lift an anchor or something first, you ask? Uh, yeah, I guess. <laughs> Just thinking about, like, him in the plane in Temple of Doom. He's like, I don't know how to fly a plane, do you? <laughs> And he just starts, like, tapping on everything. He's like, okay, okay, let's figure this out. You two don't have time to figure it out. You hear the clatter of heavy footsteps on the dock. You and Andy duck behind a large cargo crate. Someone, is is it the police, has boarded the boat. Andy looks around the deck. We have two choices, you say. We can climb overboard and wait in the water till they leave, or we can try to hide below. Which do you choose? You can try to escape by jumping overboard, or would you rather hide aboard the ship? Hide aboard the ship, 100%. If you jump into that water, they're just going to shoot you. And you're not going to go anywhere. Especially the kid. Yeah, that kid's going to get you by sharks in like a heartbeat. You and Indy practically dive over the stairs to the lower deck. You stumble through the darkness until you find a large supply locker. You pull the locker open and climb inside, pulling the door shut behind you. Is this like aliens now? Footsteps echo on the deck above you. And then you hear uh, them on the staircase to the lower deck. The footsteps silence. There's no one here, Brad. Or wait, that's not that's not Brad. That's Braddy. 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 Says a man's voice. Let's get going. You got three mugs for questioning. That's a good night's work. That's fine with me, Sergeant. You hear? I feel like Sergeant's also his name. Sergeant. Sergeant. Sar- <laughs> Sergeant. Sergeant. Colonel. Yeah. Colonel. A few minutes later, the boat is silent again, and you and Indy are alone. Or are you? As you open the supply locker, you hear a muffled cry coming from the cargo hold. We've been sharing our accommodations, Indy says, drawing his pistol. Let's go introduce ourselves. You push open the steel locker and you bust into the cargo hold. There on the floor, bound and gagged, are the boat's captain and crew. Boy, someone sure doesn't want to get where you're going, Indiana, the captain says, after you have untied him and his men. If we don't get out of port right away, that's fine with us, Indy says, grinning. The the trip has got to get better. You are steaming out of the ocean. The night starts as to reflect in the dark waves behind you. It is the most beautiful sight you've ever seen. Your destination is the tiny island of... Makala, located on the southeast of New Guinea in the Coral Sea in 1933. This is a slow voyage of many weeks, especially on a cargo boat as small as yours. Why are you heading for this distant island? By the way, 
I want to say that that kid already knew to call him Indiana, and that's a kind of a jerk move by him, because it's like, it's your little cousin, let him call you Henry. Henry? Or at least that should have been a moment in the book where he's like, hi, Henry, good to see you again. He goes, call me Indiana, kid. Yeah. So, you know, and except this isn't going to take like three hours to get to Skull, I mean, to this island. True. So, yeah, so they're going to Skull Island, pretty much. Uh, Andy spends hours leaning against the rail, his hat tilted back on his head, staring silently into the distance. Yeah, see, man, this is a terrible thing. When he's not doing, he's sitting in his cabin reading through old books and papers. One day after you've been at sea for two weeks, you get him to tell you where you are going. Why? Several years ago, Professor Abner Ravenwood led this expedition to this island of Makala. Oh, call back. Andy begins... We hope to find the remains of a lost civilization buried in the island, but he failed. Why? What happened, you ask? He was chased off the island by local natives. They claimed that he was covered ancient evil spirits. Ravenwood and his fellow scientists had to flee for their lives. A few had visited Makola since that time. Natives claim that the island is cursed and the strange creatures roam its evil spirits haunt what is left of Professor Ravenwood's excavation that has renamed the island. They call it Horror Island. Sounds like a great place to visit. Gee whiz, you say. (laughs) Why are you headed there? I'm coming to that part, Indy says. God, this kid's so naive. That kid's so dumb. Like... Oh my god, I'm so sorry for you. (laughs) That sounds like a sure place to go. Let's do it. Like, if he wants to, like, Temple of Doom, he would be one of the child slaves really quickly. (laughs) I think that chipper attitude would leave him pretty quickly after he gets whipped, like, three times a day. (laughs) Those are his meals, too. Breakfast, lunch, and dinner. Man, I'm really hungry. Can I get another whipping? I am full. The small boat churns and weighs over the water. Indy leans back against the rails, rolling his coiled bullwhip around and around in his hands and continues. A few minutes after we arrive, I got a call from Marcus Brody. He's the curator of the National Museum. He told me that he's discovered some papers and maps of Professor Ravenswood. Papers that reveal that just before Ravenswood's fled McCullough, he made a fabulous discovery. He uncovered a bird carving in ebony dove. This dove is worshipped by the idols by the natives of this island for more than 2,000 years. It's absolutely priceless. It's still on Makala. And our job is to get it for the museum, you ask. To get it for the museum and keep it away from those other jokers who want to get their hands on it could be dangerous, he adds, turning serious. If your parents knew I've brought you along, they don't know. His parents don't know. <laughs> it's just like Indy to do that. He's not going to tell anybody. He's just going to do it. Yeah, so uh, do, we're telling him that we went to Tampa for like four months. Suddenly, you're interrupted by the boat's captain. This is as far as we go, he says. You and Indy turn and look towards the horizon off the distance and see an island. Bacall, there's no shallows here, Indy says. You could bring a boat closer to shore. But I won't, the captain insists. There is a curse on the island. This is as close as I go. So he's going to make everybody swim? Yes, because I'm a dick. You and Indy are forced to row to shore in a small rubber lifeboat. It flops out of the water and bounces onto high waves, and then it hits the surface with a loud crack. Hold on to the side, kid. The sea is rough out here. Indy warns. He doesn't have to tell you that. With every bounce and jolt, you're sure the lifeboat will tip over and throw you into the churning waters. And you are right. It does. Ah! You are also so shocked you don't realize that it, it it's doing the screaming. Wait, so the water is screaming? The water is screaming. That the water's like, I guess because it's roaring? Oh, got it. Get to shore. Get to shore, kid, Indy cries, battling the waves up ahead of you. The lifeboat bobs off to your right, and you look at it. And then at the shore, should you try to swim to the lifeboat or to the shore? So you can go to the lifeboat or you can go to the shore. How far How far away from me, or from the shore are we right now? Uh, not that far. I'd imagine you just, you just got kicked off this boat and you're just got into the churning waters. Hmm. Swim the rest of the way or uh, how's my swimming skills? Uh, let me roll an initiative for you. Cool. It doesn't look good. Okay. (laughs) Then I will go for the boat. (laughs) I've had, I've had enough, uh, I've had plenty of, uh, rough decisions in my past. So I'm going to play this one safe. Go for the boat. Can you swim to the lifeboat? You take a deep breath and start. Then you realize what the lifeboat actually is coming towards you. What a lucky break. Closer and closer you come, like like a grace streak. You shake your head and get to the water out of your eyes. Wait a minute. There seems to be two lifeboats coming towards you. Now there are three. And then you stop swimming and you drop your arms and stare. Lifeboats don't have fins. 
do they? Uh, these great objects <laughs> swimming towards you are at such speed are sharks. The only hungrier can make them the faster you swim. Well, keep ducking those big teeth and try not to get into pieces. This adventure, sad to say, has come to the end. What? Wah, wah. I like back. I like how I went with the safe decision and then it ended up screwing me over. Okay, so do you do you want to swim to shore? Yeah, let's swim to shore. Let's do that one. So yeah, so you got eaten by Jaws, so or Jaws is, is well, that sucks for you being a kid and your parents don't know that you died in the South Pacific. I wonder what okay, what would Indy tell them? He probably would just tell them he died from a shark. Yeah, the malaria got them. The shark's name was Malaria. <laughs> It's like, oh, well, is there any remains left? He pulled out a soup can. <laughs> oh, God, no. Like, he actually like, killed the shark or something and, like, brings it to them. He's like, I don't know. No, it's just like he just, like, scoops some of the water. <laughs> I, I guess you can give it a ground burial, but I'm pretty sure the water, the, the ground is going to get a little muddy. <laughs> You decide to swim to land. Luckily, the current helps you pull you towards the the shore. Luckily, the sharp rocks right next to you will help you really well. Yeah, right? McCullough is only a few yards away. Gasping for air, you pull yourself onto the beach. You crawl forward a few feet and collapse onto the sand. A few minutes later, Andy is, stand, Andy is standing over you, shaking the water off his pistol. His bullwhip wrapped around his arm. He pulled you up to your feet and started to drag you towards the tree at the edge of the, of the beach. Suddenly he stops. Uh-oh. He says, we have visitors. Still trying to catch your breath, you look up to see a large group of natives approaching. They are heavily armed with long spears and bows and arrows and move towards you. As if they were accustomed to protecting their island from intruders. Be alert, kid. And he says, we may have to, for a fight. You must decide what to do. So you actually get three options here. Oh, goodness gracious. So I have... It's less of a chance to make the right decision. If you decide to reason with them, turn to page 91. If you decide to run into the jungle, turn to page 106. If you decide to stand and fight, turn to page 40. Oh, no! <laughs> so you can be diplomatic, you can run into the jungle, or you can basically, you know, kill them all with, with your magic bullets. Screw dis- diplomacy. <laughs> Screw that. No, diplomacy is going to get you a spear through your chest. Yes. And I have a feeling that if I choose to fight back, my gun won't fire because I've been in the water. And it already said he's like pouring water out of his gun. It's not going to fire. So, you know, I say I say uh, make a break for the for the oh, shoot. Ah, I hate these. I'll make a break for the forest. And I'm just going to run into another group. But we're going to die. Watch. I'll fire my pistol in the air to distract him. And he says his eyes are scanning the jungle. Trees beyond the narrow beach run to the right and then to the left. Keep moving to the side. They won't expect us to run. With any luck, we can lose them in the trees. The story of Indy's life, by the way, is serpentine. Like, that is it. Serpentine. Constantly. With any luck? The natives approach several bows carried, raise their weapons up as they walk, pulling the arrows with long from the long quivers. Indy quickly reaches into his pocket and pulls out the pistol. He raises it into the air and squeezes the trigger. It seems the ocean water has not done Indy's pistol any good. Now what? Turn to page 72. Told you! I told you! <laughs> the pistol! It would have been the same situation if you tried to shoot it at them. Okay, you, you now... Okay, so the pistol isn't working. What do you think Indy's gonna do now? So, what do I think he's gonna do personally? Yeah, personally. What, what do you think he's gonna do right now? As Indiana Jones and your personification of him I f- being a god. I, f- <laughs> I feel like what he would do is... Like, he shoots his gun in the air. It's not working. And then he'll kind of look at them and be like, huh? And like shrug his shoulders, like kind of like they, like he's just like, I don't know what I was trying to do. Kind of like what he does in Temple of Doom. Like when he comes across those, uh, the two swordsmen and he goes for his gun and his gun's not there. And he just goes, huh? <laughs> you know? So I feel like yeah. he's going to do that and then just run as fast as he can. Okay, ready? Yeah. Run, Indy screams as Boom. he dives right through the lines of native soldiers. They pull back, yelling in surprise. Wow, a man running. <laughs> they speak English? Yeah, I guess. Oh, uh, no. Uh, you run to the right, zigzagging across the sand. Run, run, Indy yells. You can't catch me. I'm Indiana Jones man. The gingerbread man. The gingerbread man. A hundred yards to the beach, an arrow whizzes past you, narrowly missing your shoulder. Another and another. You hit the ground, rolling forward in the sand. Uh, You get back to your feet, dodge another volley of arrows. Roll forward again. Can you make it to the safety of the trees, as Indy said? It's all a matter of luck, so 
you can either pick a number between one and ten. What? Yeah, pick a number between one and ten. So, what? How does this work in the book? Where? What does it say? It says if you pick a number that's even, turn to page ninety-seven. If you pick an odd number, turn to page eighty-six. Good luck and keep running. You know what? I'm gonna go with the lucky number seven. You're gonna have to tell me if that's an odd or even number. Uh, that is an even number. Thank you. I failed math. <laughs> so have I. Oh no! You roll one more time, arrows cutting the air right above you. Then you're on your feet again, leaping from sand to the trees. Your chest aches. You feel as if your lungs are gonna burst. This kid needs some like 1930s PE quickly, <laughs> or or an inhaler at least at, at this extent. I don't know if asthma was a thing was invented yet. <laughs> Asthma's a myth of the devil. <laughs> you see these kids over here in the iron lung? That's what asthma does to you. <laughs> I put her on the iron lung because of the devil. <laughs> I just feel like Indy like, is like rolling this kid in an iron lung. <laughs> He's just rolling him on the beach. Come on, kid, roll faster. <laughs> I'm going to get so many messages saying, that, that's not how the iron lung works. Yeah, because we're a podcast all about the iron lung. Thank you very much. But you've made it, and the arrows and the spears cannot penetrate the dense jungle foliage. Where's Indy? Did he make it too? The natives will soon be in pursuit, and you know the jungle much better than you do. Hey, kid, there's no time for hide and go seek. It's Indy. How do you like a shooting gallery from the other side, he asked. Guiding you quickly through the lower trees. I, I, I didn't, you managed to say. The two of you keep running deeper and deeper into the jungle. Soon the trees are so thick that there's no sunlight that can reach the jungle floor. As the natives follow you, you have a desire to turn around and try to see them. As if you keep running and running until you feet, your feet stick into soft, mushy ground. And you feel quick, yourself being pulled down into soft, warm slime. Quicksand! Oh, goodness. You can't have Indiana Jones without quicksand. Well, you can because the fourth movie doesn't exist. I hate that part. It's so stupid. There were a lot of parts in the movie that just didn't work. We'll see with Indy 5. We'll see with Indy 5. I feel like at that point they'll do a better job, probably. Raiders of the Last Retirement Home. <laughs> the chase for the adult diapers. Well, I see that's actually what the whole movie is, is Indy trying to get the Ark of the Covenant again, but really it's just like the like adult pamper like cabinet <laughs> when i was uh when i was i think it was like 15 or something i drew this picture that i just recently found again i drew indy with a walker and he's like hunched over and he's just like running away from the boulder with the walker and it just is indiana jones and the search for the adult diapers <laughs> so what would you do in quicksand i would probably just grab like a stick and like try to balance on it like don't move because apparently that makes it worse okay you ready <laughs> i don't even get a choice it just happens huh no, he had a choice. Oh, I did? What was the choice? Well, you're going to find out. Oh, okay. <laughs> Stay calm, kid, Indy says. Try not to move around too much. We pull ourselves out of this muck. Uh, I'm, I'm a quicksand, right, Indy? Yeah, quicksand. If we stretch out just a bit, we can reach those long weeds on the edge of this quicksand pit, Indy says. Then he looks up, or how about that low tree branch? Think you can grab hold of it? You just got to make a decision fast. You're sinking lower and lower into the wet, sticky sand. Do you choose the weed or the tree branch? I feel like the weeds would probably break fast, kind of like in Raiders of the Lost Ark, where he had to jump across the chasm, and he like holds onto it, and it just like falls all the way down. Uh, I'm going to go for the tree branch. Tree branch? Okay. This guy, what, you like question? What, you're saying like, okay, if you don't want the grass. I'm scared now. You're making me question my question myself. No, I'm, no, I'm just thinking because for me, like what if the tree branch breaks? Well, yeah, I mean, it's the same situation. Like anything that they give you has can have a bad outcome. But then if you if the breaks, then you still have something to balance on. Yes, yeah, so you can use Andy's corpse as a... You stretch your arms out as high as they will reach, kicking those legs into the muck, trying to climb up, up. I've got the limb. You cry, gasping as tightly in both hands. Indy is right beside you. I can pull yourself up, he asks. Yes, yes, you can. You do. The two of you move across the low tree limb, hand over hand, over the quicksand pit, away from the wet muck that Woo! held you captive. At the end of the limb, uh, you drop to the ground. And when you hit the ground, you don't stop. Wah! You cry in horror as the ground gives beneath you and you fall down. Down what seems to be a bottomless pit. Where will you land? So you got from out of the firing pan into the fire. What the heck? That's kind of a ripoff. That was the ending? No. I was going to get real mad. I'm like, this thing's cheap. Oh, that you, you survived just to die? Yeah, that'd be messed up. It's like pulling the rug from underneath you, you know? Yes. You and Andy hit the ground with a loud thump. 
At least the quicksand was soft, Indy groans. He springs to his feet and begins to explore the darkness. Wh where are we? You ask, getting slowly to your knees. This looks like some kind of tunnel. It must have been part of Professor Ravenwood's old ex excavation, Indy says. I think we've fallen right where we want to be. Oh, how do you know that, huh? How do you know that? How do, is it Indy senses? Indiana Jones in the journey to the center of the earth. <laughs> this book has changed drastically. The two of you crawl forward in the darkness until you come to branching tunnels. On the right, you can make out a low... Narrow tunnel with gray light flickering from the far end. To your left, you can see a large tunnel tall enough to stand in and twist over view. Well, Indy says, looking at the first at the tunnels. Well, Indy says, looking first at one tunnel and then the other. Which is the shortest, kid? Which tunnel do you choose to explore? So you can go through the small tunnel or the large tunnel. Hmm. How big is the small tunnel? <laughs> so... It says that the small tunnel is, you know, just enough for you guys to crawl through, basically. The large tunnel, you can, like, actually, like, move and twist. I'm gonna say the small tunnel. Well, good thing that everyone in the 1930s is super small and skinny. Yeah, right? Everything was smaller then. Let's see where the light is coming from, Indy says. Indy leads the way with his hands and knees to the lower tunnel. The ground feels damp beneath your feet as the air in the tunnel is coming out Thick and musty. Oh, God. Uh, the tunnel leads into another narrow tunnel, and you squeeze into crawling upwards as quickly as you can. The light disappears, then appears again. The tunnel twists for another tunnel, which curves and suddenly drops downwards. Oh, is this like a water slide now? Right? Just think you'll be able to tell your friends how moles live. Oh. <laughs> well, that is a terrible line. Oh, my God. <laughs> We're mole people now. <laughs> It's like Ralph Wiggum. Me fail English? That's impossible. So what did you and Indy do? Me and Indy got stuck in a hole. <laughs> we were mold people. You get a gold star today. Yay. <laughs> for participation. You know, like every uh, summer, they always have you do in English what you do that's for summer. Assignment. Yeah. I'd be like, this. that would be the first thing. We were mole people. <laughs> that's, your, that's your hook into your essay. That's my hook into my essay. And my teacher looks at it and thinks, you know, it's like those people, the doomsday preppers. Indy says, Indy says that? Wait, no, no. Indy could not have said that. Yeah, Indy said that. Ridiculous. Indiana Jones said, Rid you can tell your friends how moles live. I feel like R.L. Stein didn't really watch the movies that well. The gray light disappears completely, leaving you in total blackness. Where will the tunnel lead? So yeah, Indiana Jones is now a mole. That, that, that's such a rough line. That in, I can't see Indy, uh, Harrison Ford saying that. We're, we're mole people now. We're mole people now, kid. You crawl through another tunnel and find yourself in a large tunnel that slopes down. The ground becomes sandy and the air's hot and moist. This tunnel takes you into a tunnel that twists and turns uphill. This is very strange, Indy says. How could Professor Ravenwood's excavation team include all these small tunnels? This tunnel leads to a taller one, and then it leads to a side tunnel and another tunnel, and one that goes upstairs and one that goes downstairs. We're in tunnel world. Tunnel 1-1. You stand for a moment and... and Rub your sore knees. Ow, my bo my 1930s knees really hurt. We must be coming to the end, don't you think? You ask Indy. He doesn't answer your question. Keep moving, he says sharply, entering the darkness into yet another tunnel. Do these tunnels go on forever? I feel like it's going to end up being a boulder. <laughs> that would be legit if it was a boulder. By the way, this kid almost has died like three times and he hasn't cried once. This kid's brave. Well, this is the 1930s. Kids used to, like, beat each other up for fun. Come here, Timmy. Let me punch you in the face. Wow. Well, I mean, they didn't have TV. I guess they could go to movies. They'd probably reenact, like, Errol Flynn. You, Fli Errol you Flynn. just literally said, they don't have TV, so they punch each other in the face for yeah. fun. I don't know. Collect scrap metal for the war effort? What are you doing, Timmy? I'm collecting metal for the war. We are, we're doing our part. Do do do. <laughs> Even your dog Scampers over here is doing his part. <laughs> it's all, of course, it's like a Jack Russell Terrier. Yeah, right. Because that's the dog of the 30s. Yeah, because everyone had that. Nothing yeah. else. This tunnel leads into a cool, moist tunnel that slopes down into another tunnel. You crawl forward wearily. You know you've come too far to turn around. You could not find your way back anyway. Indy cuts a jagged line into a side of the tunnel with his knife. I want to see if we're going in, around in circles, he says. He crawls forward, following the twists and turns in the next slow tunnel of darkness. Is it possible that you're going to go around in circles? Can you be trapped in this bizarre labyrinth for, 
forever? This kid's going to be traumatized when he goes home. He's just going to be, like, shaking constantly. Oh, my God. What? You crawl through another tunnel and find yourself in a large tunnel that slopes down. The ground becomes sandy and hot and moist. The tunnel takes you in a tunnel that twists to another tunnel. That's very strange, Indy says. How could Professor Ravenswood's expedition team include all these small tunnels? The tunnel leads into a taller one. You stand in the moment and rub your sore knees. Coming to an end, Indy says. He doesn't answer your question. You keep moving. He says sharply entering the darkness to another tunnel. Do this tunnel go on forever? Are we in a loop? Yeah. What the heck? That's the ending? That's pretty much the ending. Oh my god. So we got we have- stuck. Is there a time loop in the cave? Yeah. You, you go between two pages. Okay, so what, what would be your ending? Because we don't technically have the ending. My ending to the entire book? Yeah, the ending to no, to you being trapped down here. Uh, we end up making uh, the best of our situation, and each part of the tunnel that we're looping through becomes another part of our house that we constantly walk through. And after a while, Indy decides to eat your cousin. Yeah, eventually, probably, just because he's like lean and meat and stuff, not a lot of fat. Yeah, and Indy figured out a way to get out with coconuts and a sea turtle. Pretty sure that's Pirates of the Caribbean. Shh, this is Cursed <laughs> Island. <Shh. laughs> they find Cortez's treasure, and then there's zombie sharks. Zombie sharks? Yes, that is in the next film, people. Yes, the, next, I, the next pirate film. I looked at that, and I'm just like, yeah, this has got my interest now. I mean, that trailer was pretty awesome, not gonna lie. I liked it. I'm Actually, I really like um, the villain. I, I love uh, Javier... Bardem. Yeah, he was really good in Skyfall and No Country for Old Men. Yeah, he's a really good actor. So he'll be interested to see. That's the weird thing about pirates is they get amazing actors to play the villains. Dude, imagine if um, if he was a villain for uh, for Indiana Jones. He would be a really good villain. Uh, yes. Actually, I would really like if they got like Christoph Waltz. I feel like he's played out. As a villain? Yeah, as a villain. I don't know. After after the last indie film, I was like, no. What the, okay, so what they could do is they could like kind of bring it full circle, and he's like one of those like. Did Nazis. I say the last indie film? I meant last Bond film. What am last, I saying? Last Bond film. No, I see. Like, I feel like what they could do with him is they could like bring like they kind of like do it full circle where like they make him like like a Nazi that's escaped to America, and, and then they tie it in with Inglorious Bastards. Yeah, clearly. <laughs> no, but like it's it's just like another like Nazi story they could do. I don't know. I feel like if they're gonna do something, they're gonna do something full circle. Like there's gotta be something stupid. Probably. Because I mean, I guess so. Because if they they tease the Ark of the Covenant in Indy Four, remember the last movie, the first movie we made, how good it was. Look at this. Look at this one's just as good. No, it's not. Wah, wah. Pretty much. So, Gabe, what did you think of this book? I thought it was fun, honestly, but I feel like <laughs> there's some lines in this book that really don't exemplify what Indiana Jones uh, stands for or usually says. What does Indiana Jones stand for and usually says? Uh, he usually doesn't say, now we're mole people. Tell you that much. That that does That is seriously not what he says. Indiana Jones cl- well, got stuck in this. It's from the sea madness from being on the boat for so long. And then he says, you call me Dr. Jones. Usually. Oh. So, I mean, like, you know. Yes. And he usually, you know, tries to get everyone out of situations rather than being stuck in an infinite loop. Yeah, the infinite loop thing is a really crappy ending. <laughs> Well, the last ending that I got was I became a pile of rocks. You became a pile... Okay, seriously, is this like a typical ending? Because it sounds like there's a lot of similar endings to other books you guys have done. Because there's the Batwing Hall one where you become stone. Then there was a time loop in that one as well. And there was also the pit. You know, there was a lot of the same things. Hmm, Cursed Island. I just like take off the sticker. Batwing Hall. What? It's like someone just started crossing out names and just writing Indiana Jones and Penn. And you're just like, oh, that's why. Oh, I'm looking at you, R.L. Stein. The weird thing about this book is that it's R.L. Stein that wrote this, but it doesn't... I guess, well, this is before he started writing Goosebumps and stuff, and it's it's still very... R.L. Steiny? It's very... Uh, it's Steinian. It's very Steiny? It's Steiny. I thought it was actually a fun adventure. I think it is fun. It's fun. The great parts about this is that you still you get like the Indiana Jones movie aspect. You you start the book off being shot at. Pretty normal. It's part like I said, par for the course. But yeah, no, it's 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 really cool. And also like the Indiana Jones property, there's so much. Even though there's only like a couple movies, there's so much Indiana Jones property. There's there's like a bajillion books. There's that TV show. I think it was that was the same show that at one, in one episode they they actually 
showed an older indie and he had like a he had like an eye patch and he was super old, you know? Wait, what? Did you not know this? No, I didn't know this. Yeah, like in one of the episodes they showed Indy as a really, really old man. And he had an eye patch on, he still had his hat. I don't really quite remember the details. That that's as old as I ever really remember, but I know that that happened. That does that that, that exists. Wait, yeah, no, I, I thought it was a really good book. So, Gabe, where can they find you? Ah, uh, everybody can find us uh, at Theme Park Duo on Twitter. We also have an Instagram page. We also have a Facebook. You can just search Theme Park Duo. You'll find us. And then we also have our blog site, which is themeparkduo.com. So uh, then Nikki and I are all over the place, constantly doing fun stuff. So, oh, and also Periscope. We like to Periscope from the parks and uh, do some fun stuff. And usually we'll have a decision for people to make for us just because we don't know what to do and like people to kind of be involved. So Almost like a choose-your-own-adventure. Ah! Uh, so super like- meta. Sweet. Well, you can find us at Night Fear Street, or you can even email the show at nightmarefearstreet at gmail.com. You can even leave us a cool review on any of the places that our podcast is listened to. If you want to send us a review, maybe you want to put it in the style of a choose your own adventure, or maybe in the style of what Indiana Jones would talk about reviewing this. So thank you guys for listening to another wonderful episode. Uh, We should be coming back next week with more spooky, scary R.L. Stein stuff. So thanks, guys. And I'm Zach. I'm Gabe. And stay spooky. Uh, Bye. Later.